Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Um, here in the shop, yesterday, on yesterday's video, this guitar right here was completely black. And if you remember what I mentioned in yesterday's video, I, I mentioned that I burned through the nitrocellulose lacquer finish uh, by sanding too aggressively. So I just decided to go ahead and sand this thing completely back down the wood and start from uh, ground zero. And I did the, um, we're calling it the Galaxy Blue Burst. That's what I decided to call this finish. Um, I'll show you up close what it looks like. Well, I mean, you can see what it looks like. I'm only five, um, well, here, let me show you. You can see that each little check mark is another coat of finish. Clear epoxy, clear penetrating epoxy sealer color and five coats of finish. It's pretty much what it looks like. It's a little greener than I expected because poplar wood is already kind of green. And then um, I also put yellow and blue on it, which is green, but it's black around the edges. Yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. I think it looks, you know, equally as cool as the black. So uh, I just decided to do that instead. So um, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and keep doing, uh, putting coats of finish on that. Once I get to about 10 coats of finish, uh, then we can scuff sand it, spray another 10 coats, level sand it, drop fill, all that stuff. Um, yeah, it sucks when you finishing makes or breaks a guitar. So it's very important to make sure that it's done correctly. Um, and if this messes up, I, this is, you know, if something goes wrong with this, I'm not against sanding it back down to wood and trying again until we get it perfect. So anyway, um, today I already went to Home Depot. I picked up some supplies. I'm going to rebuild my mailbox out front. Um, we're going to do um, this. There's this one design that I like. I saw somebody with it and I'm going to try to replicate it. So, um, yeah, let's uh, build a mailbox today. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so right now my mailbox is very standard and simple. It's kind of like kind of like this. Um, I had a couple different design ideas, different things that I like. And I think what I'm going to go with is kind of like kind of like this here. Basically, it's gonna be shaped like this, the mailbox on top, but this is gonna be divided into four or five pieces, and it's gonna have a curve. So we get to bend some wood with this one. We're gonna have the, the numbers like right here, going down like this on both sides. So I, I'm actually gonna make the numbers or maybe I might buy them. I don't have a metal, I don't have a mill machine, a milling machine, and I would like to have a metal, so I'll probably have to buy those instead of making them out of wood, just because the metal is gonna last a lot longer than the wood. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much that, and then I can do some kind of a design back here or something, I don't know yet, but basically that's the design I think we're gonna go for. We have to get a four by four, that's gonna go into the ground about 20 inches deep. This is the ground. We're gonna to have to concrete that in. Um, so the board itself, it's gonna be, yeah, 60, well, yeah, it's gonna be about 60 inches long because we want 40 inches from the ground to the bottom of the mailbox. And these are gonna be one by sixes. I got all that material. And yeah, let's go ahead and build it. We have all of our pieces of pressure treat cut to length. Um, this piece here, I cut it longer than the original 60 inches that I had planned on. What we're going to do is we're going to, instead of stopping here and making it flush with the top, we're going to have that post go up past and then sit behind the mailbox. So that's, uh, how the design is going to be. So I had to leave this a little bit longer to account for that. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to square all this stuff up using the planer and the joiner and, um, then we can start assembly. So in order to get this piece here, this curve, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually bend a piece of cedar, and once it's bent, that'll give us a good template to trace in order to cut this out perfectly, and then we can use the cedar itself as uh, like a filler for that area. So right here I have a piece of cedar fence um, between two buckets with a heavy bucket full of bird seed on top of it. I just have some water trickling down 
and as the sun hits it, it's going to warm it up, and just like bending a guitar side, it's going to it's going to bend it slowly. And we don't need too much of a bend, but we need more than it is now. If we need to dump some hot water on it, that'll help it along as well. But by the time we're done assembling and and painting the post and everything, this should be ready. Uh, this should be ready. Okay, so after milling this stuff down on the planer and the joiner, these are all perfectly square pieces now. Well, square enough for a mailbox. Uh, the next thing, we're gonna actually paint this thing black. We're gonna spray it black. And these are going to get stained. I haven't decided what color yet. Maybe a dark walnut or something like that. And then we just have to assemble it. Um, the last step in assembly is gonna be that curved piece. Um, we're gonna actually use that after these are attached to trace the exact curve and then we can cut it on the bandsaw and, uh, and then it'll be perfect. All right, let's, uh, let's paint this thing first. All right, we got the post painted black. I've got this here is not bent enough. So I have some water boiling. We're gonna pour some boiling water on there. That should bring it down a little bit more. In the meantime, right now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill the holes in all of these. I have an eighth inch drill bit here. We're gonna drill probably three holes for each one and we're gonna countersink each one. And then um, while that wood is bending out there, we're gonna go ahead and stain these. Um, I, I don't know if we're gonna do uh, walnut. I could probably do black, let's see, not black, but Maybe a yellower color, a lighter color would be better than black. So, I mean, we, we have plenty of blue. That might be interesting. I've got a little bit of brown mahogany, a lot of medium dark walnut. Maybe yellow. Let's see how the yellow looks. I got plenty of it. Um, this is just a little tip, and it's probably pretty obvious, but I just wanted to show it. So basically I have these holes spaced. This is where it's gonna get drilled onto, uh, screwed into the side of the post. So I wanna make sure that all of the screws also aren't off or different than each other. So I'm just laying the previous piece on top of the next piece. And then just following that, using this one piece as a template for every single piece. So that way uh, when, I, when I countersink them and put the screws in, it's not gonna look like off, it'll, it'll all look um, very symmetrical. That's what we're going for. So check out this awesome feature of this Nova Viking uh, drill press. So I have it set to stop at a certain depth. And then as soon as it hits that depth, it's automatically gonna reverse and go back up. And then I don't even have to press the, the on button. I just pull the thing down and it's automatic self-starting. So check this out. I have to start it up manually at first. Okay, so it's on. Look at that. Every hole will be exactly the same depth. Okay, so here's the issue. So we have a piece of cedar right here and we tried bending it, but it was actually about twice as thick and I ran it through the planer to make it a little bit thinner to bend it better. Because right now, I can only go, I can only bend it to about there before it starts to crack. And we need to bend it all the way to here. So what we have to do is we have to thin this down even more so we can bend it all the way. Um, we're gonna have to bend it using more hot water. And once we can bend it all the way to here, then we can trace that cut this off, and then install that bent piece of wood underneath. All right, I took it over to the planer and I brought it down to about half, almost half the thickness. We're at like three eighths right there. But as you can see, by hand, I could almost bend it. 
feels like it's gonna crack, but I don't think it will. Right, the two buckets, now that, that would work if the, uh, the curve didn't have to be really tight. So I'm gonna do a little bit more of an extreme measure here. So I just have a piece of 550 cord wrapped all the way around it with a slip knot in one end. So I'm just gonna put my foot here and we can tighten it down. Not so much that it cracks, but like right before it cracks, right about there. And then I can go ahead and put a temporary knot in there. And then we just pour hot water on it. Hopefully it'll stay like that. Once this dries, the wood cells should take on a new shape that it's bent in. Should. But we'll see. I know I've worked with cedar before. This is cedar wood um, with guitars. And it sure does hold its shape. Just have to let it dry. have to let it dry naturally. I'm gonna go get some breakfast and uh, we'll come back to this. I wonder if I can hit that uh, fender poster over there. I knocked it down. All right, let's see if this worked. So, Just gonna start from here and go straight across like that. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to take this over to my bandsaw and raise the blade up and then just trace it straight across. There it is, so far, not too, too terrible. It's kind of what I'm shooting for. Um, yeah, I can even have my, my name right here, K-L-E-S-H, the number of the house, and a mailbox on top. Now remember, this is gonna be buried in the ground 20 inches deep, so this from here down is gonna be underground in concrete. Okay, so the next step is to take that bent piece of wood and attach it right here. The next step is to put glue on the face of the surface here and then brad nail that on. I shouldn't have to worry about clamping it because once I get these brad nails in down here, that should hold it in place. Trying to keep it lined up as I go up. All right, so I also have to add a little platform here for the mailbox to be nailed to, or screwed down to, or fastened to, or whatever fancy word you want to use. All right, we're ready to uh, install it outside. All right, I got the old mailbox removed and the new hole dug. It is 20 inches deep, which is what we planned on. However, <laughs> when I dug this hole, I, I dug it from where the old post was and I dug it straight down. Uh, however, this mailbox sticks out a lot further than my old one. So this hole actually has to be back here. So we're going to go ahead and fill that, dig a new hole, 
and then uh, hopefully we can pour some concrete tonight. All right, we got our new hole dug, eight, uh, 20 inches deep, filled this one in with that dirt. Um, we moved it back to make up the difference of how much further this one is ahead compared to the old one. Now we just got to set it in there, make sure it's level, pour some concrete. We got a new mailbox. I still have to do the, the numbers and all that, but I'll do that off camera. All right, walking down the driveway, you can see the new mailbox post. I cannot uh, install the actual mailbox yet because this is perfectly level. And if, as soon as I put that on, it leans forward slightly. So I'm just gonna wait for that to dry. As you can see, it needs some touch up here and there. I'm still gonna uh, coat it with some polyurethane to make it a little more weatherproof, even though it's all pressure treat. But that should last a long time. Also the polyurethane will preserve that color as well. Um, the screws, they're um, outdoor construction screws. These will not like bleed or rust or anything either. So yeah, I guess the only other thing I have to do is put, you know, the address and my name on it and we're good to go. So if you guys enjoyed the video, let me know. If you have any cool mailbox tips or tricks, let us know in the comments and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.